Hey guys, in the Got A Minute segment that we're starting, I got to thinking about something that I feel like would be very important to share. How many of you have ever heard about the anointing with oil? How many of you wonder what the anointing with oil is? I remember one time having a lady that I went to at the hospital and God spoke to my heart and said, anoint this lady with oil. Because I remember the scripture was so strong. And of course, I did. I went and anointed her with her oil. And uh, it's a whole process when I had to go get it. Imagine going to a hospital and trying to figure out how to get old. That's a story in itself. But I'm here to focus on that. I want to share this with you. So I came through and she said, well, what kind of belief are you? I said, I'm Christian. Because the simple fact is I don't care what um, denomination you are. It's literally in the scriptures. You see all these televangelists and different individuals have talked about anointing and, and things like that. But you very seldom, very seldom see it done in the proper light. You see healings on television, but I've very seldom seen it done the way the Bible says that a healing is supposed to occur. Uh, there's a lot of factors that go into it, but there's a scripture that talks about the anointing with oil and how important it is. Um, I think it's less about the oil than it is the faith and the acts and the works that go to it. But through this, let's look at the scripture that brings it together. It's in James 5, and it says this, Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let their prayer of faith save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up and if committed any sins, they shall be forgiven. Let us pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for all that you do. Lord, help us to be able to talk about this scripture. And Lord, I pray that it helps each and every person here have an understanding of what this means. Guide me in what you would have me say or do. And if I say anything that's not pleasing to you, I pray that you silence me by whatever means necessary. Anyway, the scripture is pretty forward in what it says. Uh, this is saying if anybody's got these problems, anybody's sick among you, uh, then there's you call for the elders of the church. And I guess that depends on the church. You know, we don't have a whole lot of elders right now. I don't think that's as much age as it is those that are strong in the Lord and focused in the Lord, those that have been studying in the Lord, those that are called in the Lord. Some folks think it's pastors. I do believe the pastor should be a part of it. But I believe it should be the leaders in the church. Uh, certainly the elders would have, uh, most of them would have knowledge and the, uh, the, the heart for the Lord. But that's the big thing, having the heart for the Lord and having the knowledge of the scriptures. You know, in this case, you might use somebody that's 20 years old. If in their heart they really love the Lord and they've been serving Him and they're um, set in their way. And I think the word elder is used in a uh, strong way because of this. You have a lot of people that come to church and they've got a fire to begin with and they spark and they're just, you know, they're just, they've got this thing about them. You can see all this inside of them. They're excited. They've got that fresh fire from Jesus. But I've seen a lot of them to come through and to pass away. You know, the parable of the sower, where so many fell on the this and so many fell on that, and a lot of them didn't make it, and you had some that fell on fertile ground that sprung up. Well, that's the case here. You may have some that, that fell on rocks and just couldn't find that fertile ground, or, or some that, strung, uh, that uh, uh, sprung up and were the life was choked out of them. But in this case, I think we're talking about elders. These are those that uh, are deep-rooted in faith, deep-rooted in their service to Jesus Christ. When you come together with them, and I want to apologize if you hear cats here. Y'all know where we live. My wife loves cats, so we got cats everywhere. So through this, just having that desire uh, to serve God, having the stick to itiveness I think those that... Um, uh, that have served God for a period of time and, and, and they are dedicated in their service to Jesus Christ. I think that's what this means in this case. Those that have really stuck through there in the service of God through good times and bad times, those that have a heart for the Lord, those leaders in the church that should be leaders in the church. Now through this, you go to them and the Bible says it's pretty simple. We pray and we anoint them with oil. But I think there's a, a special thing here too. It says, let them, let's go back and read the scripture again, and let's kind of dissect it and see what it says. Uh, is any among you afflicted? Let them pray. That's your first step. First and foremost, if you've got a problem, you need to pray about it, give it to God. You know, and, and, and Lord, ask him, Lord, I'm struggling with this. You don't necessarily need somebody else uh, to pray for you. I ask for people to pray for me all the time for all kinds of things, and still ask for people to pray for me all kinds of things. Uh, but that being said, 
we've got to pray ourselves. And sometimes it's hard. Isn't it hard to pray for yourself when everybody else needs so much and we feel so blessed? But God wants you to be in prayer with him to humble and submit yourself. And I think that that's part of the reason why so many times in the Bible you see uh, uh, the act of service when it comes to that, the act of obedience, where there was an individual who, um, who, who was in need of a healing and Jesus told him to go to these waters, these specific waters. And I think the reason why was nothing to do with the water. It's the obedience. That's my opinion. And with the oil, I don't know if it's as much the oil as it is the act of following the instructions that God has laid out for you. I don't think the oil is necessarily sacred. I believe it's following the rules that God has set. So many people want to remote control God now. They want a God that they can just say, you know, I want it, give it to me now. Uh, Y'all, that's terrible. I remember talking about a pastor one time that would say, uh, um, you know, you pay your tithes. And he was standing up there and said, when you pay your tithes, you know, you'll get this, you'll have all these blessings, this big, beautiful house. You know, God, does not, God doesn't want you to not have that big three-story house and that Rolls Royce. And God wants you to be rich and all the things of this world. But when I was serving, and since I've been serving God, when I was reading the Bible, mm, my heart says, or Jesus says, that we're not supposed to be of the things of this world. That doesn't mean you won't receive blessings. But through this, we've got to see this. We've got to humble ourselves. We've got to keep our heart focused. And we've got to have faith. Prayer is the key, 100%. Uh, we'll go to the next part. If any's merry, let them sing psalms. I love that. You know, if, if you're happy because what God... You know the old song, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, praise God. I don't care where you're at. I mean, you can be in the middle of a restaurant. Praise God. Wherever you're at. Don't ever be ashamed to bring praise, honor, glory to God. And especially in church. Don't let folks affect that. And I know we're getting off topic, but I don't think so. I think this is what this is saying. You know, you've got to do these things from your heart. If there is, and what, what's, what's the common denominator here? It's all about action. It's all about action. I believe in my heart that a child of God won't want the things of the world uh, so much. That I'm going to say you don't want a nice house and a nice car. But the thing about it is we seek more after the things of the kingdom of heaven than we do the things of this world. We should want to focus more on the service of Jesus Christ. But in this case, we see that it says if you are merry, sing psalms. If you're in church, don't let the person in front of you uh, hinder you because you're worried about what they might think or the people around you or beside you. You remember God's in the house and he's called you to do this. So if you're merry, you sing songs. I remember, it's funny you say that, I said psalms, but I, well, it brings me to mind songs. I was in the middle of church years ago and uh, Brother Ed Davis was preaching. And I remember feeling in my heart like I needed to sing a song. And of course... I did. I went and sang this. I mean, I didn't, I, of course, because everybody was around and, and uh, you know, I, I'd have felt funny standing up and singing. I really believe that was God that laid that on my heart to do it at that time. But I didn't act on it because I was worried about the people around me. And the simple fact is, sometimes you got to do what God's laid in your heart to do. Now, going back to the meat of this, it says, um, Is any sing among, sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of the faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise them up. If he have committed any sins, they shall be forgiven of him. All right, here we go. Number one, where does it start off with? It says, call for the elders of the church, let them pray over him. Sometimes when we don't have the faith, sometimes it's not in our heart, sometimes to be able to receive what God has given us. Sometimes we need others to pray with us. There was a man one time that child was sick in the Bible, and Jesus said, if you have the faith, and he said, Lord, uh, help me that I might have the faith. And so his prayer was to have faith so he could actually step up and do that. Sometimes we don't have the faith and we say these prayers. And we don't see action in our in our, our prayers because, you know, we don't believe them. The Bible says a double-minded person shall not receive anything. But in this case, this is saying that, you know, you, you've got these steps to do. You go through, you call before the elders of the church, they pray for you, and then through that they anoint you with oil. And because of the steps, you go to the elders. I don't think that people in church, the pastors in church, should have an anointing party saying, all right, guys, today is anointing day. Let's anoint everybody. And I didn't say that. It said for you to come to the elders of the church, for you to come to the folks in the church, 
for you to ask for it. Amen? Not somebody else. For you to ask for it. You go up. You make that step. Because it's hard sometimes to come up to, to, to the pastor and say, Will you anoint me with oil? Sometimes it's embarrassing. Don't know why. But sometimes it's embarrassing for folks to do that. If you are, rebuke that. Rebuke that, that embarrassment. And you step up and do it. You do what God has called you to do. There's a reason for it. Then through that, it's simply like this. You believe. You pray. They anoint. You believe. Confess. Repent. You're saved. You believe. You pray. They anoint. We pray together. And the Bible says that you shall be healed. Now, it may not always be the healing you want. But trust me. If you follow the instructions, you'll be so surprised at what God can do. So if you've ever heard of the anointing with oil, here's a little bit about it. There's a lot more. This was just a touch just to see if you had a minute. So thank you, and I appreciate that, and hope to see you again next time you got a minute. Let's pray this out. Father, we love you. We thank you for all that you do. I thank you for each and every person here. Dear sweet Jesus, help us to be better Christians and to serve you the best way possible. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys.